Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. Today we are going to be continuing the Tornadoes Around the World series. And so far we've covered a lot of different exciting places, mostly in Europe and Asia. But today we're finally going to be taking a look at tornadoes in South America. One of the reasons it took me so long to get to this project finally was because I'm not a speaker of Spanish or Portuguese. So there was a lot of information out there that I didn't understand and couldn't translate very well. That was until I got this really wonderful, wonderful email from a friend, Rodolfo, who lives in South America and was so kind to help me translate a lot of really important documents into English. So without the help of Rodolfo, this video really wouldn't be possible. So a big, big thank you and shout out to you. I'm really grateful for your help. So today, of course, we're going to take a look at the meteorology behind tornadoes in South America. We're going to take a look at some of the most notable instances of twisters in these countries. And then we're going to take a look at some of the more interesting events, non-fatal ones as a little bit of a palate cleanser. And with all of that out of the way, I have one final thing before we get into the video. I'm going to be doing a full review of the Tempest weather system by Weatherflow. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a preview before we do the full review. Four months last year, I had actually been wanting to upgrade my weather system. I had been trying to find one that would kind of be a good upgrade. And I'm really excited to let you guys know that I have finally found it. I got the Tempest weather system a few weeks ago. So of course I've been trying it out in the meantime. The first main thing you'll notice about this if you've had other weather systems in the past and one of the things that makes this tempest system so unique is that it is one singular part oftentimes if you have a full weather system you'll have an anemometer with the spinning arms to it this one does not it just is the one singular straightforward piece which makes it really simple the system is completely wireless it's powered by solar panels on the back and it takes literally just five to ten minutes to set up in terms of functionality, I'm going to talk about this a lot more in depth on the full video review, but there's a lot of extra things that other weather systems don't have. On top is the light sensor and the UV system. The top is actually a haptic rain sensor as well. So you're going to get a really accurate reading of when it starts raining, the intensity and the duration. Underneath, you've got the sonic wind sensor, which is the ultrasonic anemometer. It's going to give you a really accurate reading of wind speed and direction. Inside the panels here, you've got the barometer and thermometer so you're going to get air temperature humidity and dew point measurements and i think honestly my really most favorite part about this system is that it has lightning detection we just had the january 12th or 13th outbreak this week so there were a lot of really intense storms where i was at and i got really good lightning readings from the system in terms of setup i mean it was so straightforward and easy again i'll talk about this all in the full review it took less than 10 minutes. You just download the app. They give you a quick setup guide. They show you how to connect it and put it outside, orient it north, and it's ready to go. You're looking at the weather. Once you set everything up, the system feeds real-time weather data from your station into a machine learning system, and it's constantly improving your forecast accuracy every single day. And honestly, user interface is a big one for me for any website or app that I have. I like to have a good amount of information, especially with weather without being overwhelming. Both the app and the website are incredibly easy to use. If you want a ton of that in-depth information, all you do is click on whatever you want to look at and you get so much in-depth data from your system. And honestly, if you're a weather nerd, checking out all of this data is actually really fun. Overall, even in just my first initial experience before I do the full review, this is by far the best weather station that I've ever had. If you are someone who is serious about their weather and is looking for an incredibly quality system and precise forecast, the Tempest is the system for you. I have never and I will never promote a product that I don't fully love and truly believe in. And that's why I want to let you guys know that I am really loving the Tempest weather system and I'm confident that you will too. If you are interested in the Tempest weather system, of course, I do have a referral code. So if you go to the link in the description, you have to click on that link to let them know that I sent you. And then from there, you're going to get a 10% discount on the entire system using my code, which is, I believe, Carly Anna. And with that, let's get back into the video. Pasillo de los 
los tornados. Paseo de los tornados, or corridor of tornadoes as it directly translates, is a region in South America comprised largely of the central and eastern countries with geographic conditions that help make it more favorable for tornado occurrences. The corridor of tornadoes is expansive and reaches from southern Brazil down into Uruguay, Paraguay, and further south down into the most notorious South American country for tornadoes, Argentina. Even more fascinating is that some of these tornadoes occur as far west as Chile in the Andes mountain range. Tornadoes in South America are both well documented and studied by scientists, so let's take a look at some of the basic meteorology behind them. Geographically, South America is home to some of the most unique and diverse regions in the world. To the west, the Andes Mountains, the longest mountain chain in the world, provide different climates depending on which area you're talking about, but today we're going to be talking specifically about the central portion of the Andes, which provide cooler, drier air. Juxtaposed directly east of the Andes is the Amazon rainforest and river basin. The Amazon biome, of course, is a dense, moist, tropical forest, which of course can be characterized by high temperatures and high humidity. The northeastern portion of the continent consists of the Brazilian highlands, regions of low mountains and tabular plateaus. To the south, the southern tips of Argentina and Chile are much colder during their winter months thanks to the Antarctic air. And one final yet critical piece to all of this, the Pampas. The Pampas are fertile, low grasslands centered over Uruguay and portions of north and central Argentina. The Pampas in many ways could be compared to the United States Plains. Both are grasslands, both sit just east of a major mountain range. The United States has the Great Plains, but South America has the Pampas. So very generally speaking, when you take a vast open area of lowlands just next to a major mountain range and you combine them with two drastically differing climates to the north and south, the result is going to be periods of volatile weather during certain months of the year. And by far, the most violent twisters occurring in Argentina. In terms of weather services available, there are a lot of great systems in place for severe weather in each respective country. Now, technically, officially, there are no tornado watches, forecasting, or warnings, but there are storm watches and severe storm warnings, which I think is already a really good thing. So with all of that context, let's now take a look into tornadoes in South America. We're going to start off by taking a look at the country where the most frequent and intense tornadoes occur, in Argentina. On May 6, 1992, one of the most violent tornadoes of Argentina's history would move through Estacion López. In the afternoon hours of May 6, storms begin forming in the central portion of the Benito Juárez province. After an entire morning and afternoon of rain showers, the weather was about to get much more intense for the residents of Estacion López. Shortly after 6 p.m. local time, the rain suddenly stops. Hail now begins to fall. And not just an average size hail, golf ball size hail begins pummeling the town. Although strange and intense, after a few minutes, the residents now thought the worst of the weather was over, but they were wrong. Something much more sinister was in the distance. Not 10 minutes after the hail struck the town, suddenly the residents are facing 130 plus mile per hour winds. In just a few minutes, a destruction path three blocks wide tears through a majority of the town center. The tornado, which was ultimately given an F4 rating, has just caused the most material destruction a twister has ever caused in Argentine history. Tragically, four people lost their lives in the wake of this storm, with more than 100 people injured, almost half of the population. After the tragedy, a majority of the town's total 250 residents had to move elsewhere. 
without the main infrastructure of the city and not enough remaining homes to house everyone, many had to find other cities to stay, many of which opened their doors with welcoming arms. It was said that the town of Estacion Lopez died that day on May 6th, but the story of the town wasn't over. In the coming weeks and months after the tornado, the local residents, the municipality, and the local government all got to work rebuilding the town. And by October 31st, 1992, not even six months after the twister struck the town, Estacion Lopez had its second chance at life, thanks to all of the hard work from the people who believed so strongly in this tiny town. Today, the town is still incredibly small with just a few blocks and mostly farmland. You can still see traces of the tornado, so much so that you can almost feel it when you look at these pictures. But when you consider that this tiny town was home to the Southern Hemisphere's second most powerful tornado on record, it's hard to not be impressed. Now we're going to take a look at one of the most, if not the most infamous twister in the Southern Hemisphere's history, one with an almost mythical aura around it. It's not only the deadliest and most destructive tornado in Argentina's history, it's the Southern Hemisphere's only recorded F5. The city of San Justo is located in the Santa Fe province of Argentina. In the 1970s, this relatively smaller town was not known for anything significant and rather was a quiet farming community. But that was about to change in a big way. On January 10th, 1973, just after 2 p.m. local time, a tornado touches down to the west of the city center. While we don't have a ton of the meteorological background of this twister, it's apparent that the atmosphere was primed for a violent tornado. Shortly after touching down, the twister now begins to move over San Justo, taking this very dark, sinister appearance as it begins to pick up soil and debris. From start to finish, the twister only lasts about 10 minutes, but in that time, it's directly hit multiple factories, farms, and an estimated 500 homes in that short period of time. By the time the twister has lifted, it's cut a 300 yard wide swath through the heart of San Justo. Shortly after the event, the town was declared a military emergency zone and troops would begin taking over the search and rescue. Heavy rain and power supply issues only further hindered the search and rescue process and gave little hope of finding any additional survivors as the overnight hours passed. Many people were worried that there might be much more victims than initially thought. In the coming days, both power and communication lines were severed because of the twister and the entire city went without power for an extended period of time. But despite all of this tragedy, the response to the tornado was nothing short of incredible. Firemen, ambulance, and troops from Santa Fe were all sent in to help the city's recovery operations. Transport aircrafts 300 miles away from San Justo flew in special shipments of medicine, food, and clothing for those who were injured and now without a home. Within the first few days, 25 were confirmed to have passed away, without much hope for 13 who remained missing. In total, the San Justo tornado took 80 lives. Some resources will say 63, but regardless of the total amount, it's evident that whether it's 63 or 80, the total loss of life is horrific and unprecedented for a South American country. Interestingly, this tornado was actually studied by Dr. Ted Fujita himself, which he later claimed was, quote, the most intense and violent tornado I've ever seen outside of the United States, which coming from Dr. Ted Fujita says a lot. In 2023, the San Justo tornado remains the only ever F5 recorded in the Southern Hemisphere.
On April 13, 1993, the largest tornado outbreak the Southern Hemisphere has ever seen would unfold across Argentina, in what is now deemed to be the Southern Hemisphere's super outbreak. In the late afternoon hours of April 13, 1993, what was thought to be typical seasonal thunderstorms began to form over the center of the Buenos Aires province, quickly moving east. After 8 p.m. local time and over the next three hours, these storms would produce over 100 tornadoes from F0 to F3 intensity. Tragically, because this tornado outbreak occurred in the late to overnight hours, low visibility meant that most people in the paths had little to no time to react. Many smaller localities were the worst hit regions. Many small communities that relied on agriculture for their livelihoods were largely destroyed by these twisters. One of the higher rated tornadoes of the night was an F3 twister that hit a small community known as Henderson, causing catastrophic damage. And an F2 in the coastal town of Mar del Plata, which was the deadliest twister of the evening, that took six lives and injured 80. By the next morning, seven fatalities were confirmed from the over 100 tornadoes that wreaked havoc across Argentina. Over the next few days, the extent of the damage would become increasingly apparent. Some of the worst in Henderson, where the F3 struck, other areas like Mar del Plata, while the damage was not as intense, the city was hit in the center, making the damage a lot more catastrophic for the local businesses. Because of how many twisters, many were likely brief spin-ups or in incredibly rural areas, there is no accurate estimate of how many homes and buildings were destroyed. It's safe to say in the thousands, but there were no official surveys. That's why when you look at a map, a lot of them are FU, which is unrated. Some of the resources I read said that the twister amount could have been in upwards of 250 total tornadoes. I am a little skeptical of that number. I think over 100 or about 100 seems a little bit more realistic, but I could be totally wrong on that. There could have been 250 tornadoes. The truth is that we will never actually know. Regardless of the total number, this was absolutely unprecedented in not only Argentina, but in the Southern Hemisphere as a whole. And the April 13th, 1993 outbreak will remain in the residents' minds and in history as the worst tornado outbreak the Southern Hemisphere has ever seen. This next one also comes from the Sao Paulo district in Brazil. And the name of the city is a little difficult for me, so I do apologize. On Tuesday, May 24th, 2005, a cold front approaches the state of Sao Paulo with plenty of moisture out in front of it. The clashing of air masses was certain to bring severe storms. The kind of thunderstorms that the residents of Indiatuba were more than familiar with. What nobody could expect, however, was that this thunderstorm was about to produce one of the most destructive tornadoes in the region's history. Just after 5 p.m. local time, what would become an F3 twister touches down and moves through the southwestern portions of Indiatuba. In the next hour, the twister would move through the industrious areas of the city, damaging or destroying at least 400 companies and derailing 18 rail cars. The twister then moves into several neighborhoods where it is reported to have caused one fatality before it lifts. Now, shockingly, this twister was only reported to have caused one fatality due to the extent of the damage that occurred. Brazil declared a state of emergency for the area and the damage would total to an estimated 19 million US dollars. This is said to be the first ever multi-vortex tornado to be filmed in the Southern Hemisphere and certainly remains one of the strongest that Brazil has ever seen. On Friday, April 15th, 2016, a destructive EF3 tornado moves through the town of Dolores in Uruguay. Just after 4 p.m. local time, the twister, in almost unreal wedge, moves directly over the town's center impacting hundreds of businesses and homes in the process. 
The videos of this twister are honestly both astonishing and horrific because you know that it's moving over a populated region, but they are absolutely captivating nonetheless. It's the kind of footage that you also kind of don't want to see because you fully understand how close these people are to a wedge tornado and you know that there is a real possibility that they are injured or people very close to them are injured. By the time the twister finally lifts outside of the city, authorities reported that some 155 businesses were damaged, with 1,544 families impacted. And while those numbers might not seem as large or grand as some of the other numbers we've talked about today, this was 70% of the homes in Dolores that were impacted, 40% of which were found to have been completely destroyed. After the event, of course, a state of emergency was declared as the city had no water or electricity for days. Shortly after the event, the Red Cross came in to assist victims and do a full report where they spent roughly three months in the area assisting families with cleanup and any additional needs that they had. Tragically, four people lost their lives from the tornado itself. Three more people lost their lives to flooding and 200 people were injured in one of the most prevalent tornadoes in South American history. This tornado remains the strongest and most devastating in the country of Uruguay. Well, after all of these really interesting tornado events, I'm curious to know what you all think if you have any experiences with tornadoes in South America, let me know down in the comments. If you have not subscribed and you would like to subscribe, please do that. We just hit over 20K, which thank you all so much. That is very exciting. I really appreciate all of you. If you wanna follow me on social media, I do have a Twitter and an Instagram that you can follow. And yeah, that's all I have for you all today. I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Getting ready to sound stupid. I'm ready. La 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 la. <laughs> I can't remember the words. I will say gorilla hell. Well, I have a peanut brain, so. La 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 la. Pasillo de los Tornados. Oh my god. <laughs>